All right, today we're looking for something really unique. Two things, actually. We're looking for the key deer, which is, think a regular deer, but really, really small. They're highly endangered. You can only find them in the Florida Keys, and there's, I think, what was less than a thousand of them on our planet. And then we're also looking for the great white heron. Now, some people say this bird is actually a morph or a subspecies of the great blue heron, but it's bigger and it's solid white and it has yellow legs instead of black. So hopefully we can find one of each or several of each. We'll see. Oh, and I forgot to mention that searching for the great white heron and the key deer meant that I would have to be in the Florida Keys during spring migration. Oh, poor me. Life in the Florida Keys moves at a much different pace. Time seems to move a little slower, and this cormorant is the perfect example. I pulled over on the side of the road and walked down a short trail through the mangroves to get these images. This laughing gull was also just taking things easy, and this black neck stilt slowly meandered through a tide pool. All of this is just a very small example of what the Florida Keys has to offer. If you ever find yourself in the Keys, make sure you stop by Robbie's, a local restaurant that has a world-renowned reputation for the wildlife that lingers on, under, and around its docks. Giant tarpon over six feet or two meters hang out here, and people hand feed them fish. It's just absolutely an incredible thing to watch. Of course, the pelicans are here for an easy feed as well. This manatee was also on the scene, but it wasn't eating fish. They're vegetarians. It was eating some of the vegetation growing on the side of the dock. Check out these hungry fish. You can buy a small bucket of bait fish at the docks to feed these larger fish, and that's what all these people are doing. There's a nurse shark swimming around in here too, and listen how excited this young girl is when she sees it. Oh my god, there's a nurse shark! Oh, yes! Right there! Right there, it just swam under the dock. Can it? your fish. As you can see, the bait fish don't last long once they hit the surface of the water. I don't know about you, but I don't think I would be reaching down trying to hand feed any of these fish, especially with a shark swimming around. All right, I just saw a great white heron. And if I can turn around and get back there in time, I'm gonna get some pictures of it. But the traffic here is horrible. Hopefully I can do it. All right, the great white heron is right up here on the side of this road. You can see straight ahead. See how close I can get to get some pictures so you can see what he looks like. This is the great white heron, a rare subspecies of the more common great blue heron. You can only find this bird in South Florida. It doesn't exist anywhere else on our planet, and that is totally awesome. You can see how it resembles a great blue heron too. It has that nice wide beak for spearing fish and those long lanky yellow legs. In this shot where the wind blew the feathers back, you can see what looks like blue colored skin underneath. By the time I located this great white heron, it was already late in the day and the sun was directly overhead. This was creating some unwanted shadows on the bird's face. Luckily, I found another great white heron much closer to my house and I was able to get some shots and some really good light. Here's the heron now with a bunch of other birds. Can you tell which one's the heron? It's a little difficult to tell with all those other birds in the shot. The heron is the larger bird on the right side. And here's an excellent comparison shot. On the left, you have the great white heron with those long yellow legs, and on the right, you have the great egret, which is noticeably smaller and has black legs. Because this great white heron was located just a few miles from my house, I was able to locate the bird in the early morning hours, as you can tell from this image. Notice how the bird is reflecting back that nice golden light from the rising sun. Being solid white presents some serious challenges for photography. These birds act like giant reflectors, and they bounce the light back right towards your camera. The end result is often blown out highlights which lose all of the detail in the feathers. There are a few ways to fix this problem. You can change the metering mode on your camera to spot metering. This will expose the image for just one area or spot. This is typically where the focus points are, but I've found this produces inconsistent results. I prefer to use just a little bit of exposure compensation and underexpose the image. In these two images, I wasn't using any exposure compensation, and you can tell by the lack of detail in the feathers. In this shot, I lowered the exposure compensation to negative 0.7, and it really helped bring out more details in those feathers. And you can see a little more of that blue skin under the wing there. In this next shot, you get a good look at that back foot. Check out the nail on that bird's toe. Here's a closer look. That looks just like a dinosaur foot, if you ask me. Man, that thing is huge. 
I spent a lot of time with this bird, and during this time, I was presented with some great photo opportunities, like this really different looking wing stretch. I was also constantly changing my settings to compensate for the cloud cover that kept moving in and out of the area. Take a look at the wings in this shot. It's amazing how the water reflects on the underside of the wings and creates that light shimmer in the shadow. And do the wings remind you of anything? Take a look at them. To me, they look just like the classic portrayal of angel wings. How amazing. When I found this bird, Florida was in the middle of a very bad drought. The pond where this bird was hanging out was drying up and all the fish were just swimming around in mud. You can clearly see a fish's back sticking out of the mud in this image. And I'm not sure if the heron was just full, inexperienced, or these fish were too large because the bird would walk right up to these fish and just lightly poke them with its beak and then just watch them scoot away in the mud. It was really weird to watch. I really like this shot. The heron has zeroed in on a nice mud-covered fish, and I got this cool-looking rippled reflection as the wind picked up. Would the heron finally reach down and pull one of these fish out of the mud? In this clip, you can see that the heron has plenty of opportunities. Look at all the fish swimming around. You can see their backs on top of the water there. And finally, the great white heron becomes the great white hunter as it plucks what looks like a large chocolate-covered fish from the muck. Now, do you think the bird is going to eat this fish covered in mud? No. A nice dip in the water to clean that mud off before the heron attempts to swallow this large fish whole. And this is my favorite shot of the great white heron. You can clearly see the fish's eye peeking out as it takes a final look at the world. Here's a closer crop version of the same image. If I had to give this image a title, I would call it Eye for an Eye. And yes, this bird is going to attempt to swallow this fish whole. As a final act of defense, this fish flexes its dorsal fin, making it rigid. Those vertical lines in the fish's dorsal fin are very sharp spines. I know this because I've had the displeasure of feeling these spines on multiple occasions while fishing. And by the way, this fish is a tilapia, the same fish that is served at many high-class restaurants. But this last line of defense is a futile attempt as the heron finishes the fish and then follows up with a nice feathery stretch. After all of that hard work, the great white heron does some casual preening while giving me the opportunity to get some really nice reflection shots. One final stretch with a ruffling of the feathers, and then it's nap time for this hardworking great white heron. I have a question for you, and feel free to answer in the comments section. Before watching this video, did you know the great white heron existed? Or did you possibly mistake this bird for a great egret? I'd like to know either way. Feel free to leave a comment. All right, let's see if we can find these little teeny miniature deer, the key deer. They're supposed to be a bunch. I'm actually in um, a refuge for them. I took a quick hike to one of the only freshwater ponds in the Florida Keys in hopes of finding some key deer, but there were no deer to be found. Instead, I found this turtle soaking up some sun. Look at the nails on that turtle's front feet. Do you think those long nails mean this turtle is male or female? We all know most girls like long nails, but in the turtle world, it's the males who have long front nails like this. And then I grabbed this interesting perspective of a softshell turtle. They are so weird looking. After that, I spied this tiny little prairie warbler deep in the shadows. This tiny little bird was very nervous, and it didn't know what to think of me and my camera. I had to lower my shutter speed in order to get enough light on this little bird as it started to become confident with my presence and finally came out of cover. I decided to wait until just before sunset to search for the elusive key deer, and I'm glad I did. As I entered the refuge for the second time, this happened. Um, dude, this is crazy. Look at them all. This tiny and highly endangered deer came right up to me. I believe it was looking for a handout. As soon as I told them I didn't have anything, they went on their way. And you can clearly see this one, number 24, has a tracking collar on. Because there are so few of these left on our planet, some of them are being monitored and tracked. You are. I don't have anything. And it looks to me like they're a little disappointed that I didn't bring any food for them. There's two more coming. I can't move. Apparently, me not having any food didn't stop number 24 from munching on this leaf. 
It was a little difficult to grab these shots from the truck because the sun had almost set and any remaining light was being blocked by a tree line. I had to lower my shutter speed to get more light. I was using the D500 and the Nikkor 200-500 to handheld, and all of these images look great thanks to the outstanding VR on that lens. I'm going to leave this video with this last image of this awesome little deer. Thanks for watching, and as always, click the thumbs up, leave a comment, and let me know what you think of the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go for it. I have lots of great stuff planned.